Hey, what's up? Welcome to Plex Guide. So we're here to talk about Portainer, which is pretty much one of the most simple programs to run, but it can be a little complicated to run depending on what you're doing. It's one of the basic programs that's going to help provide a sanity check for you while utilizing Plex Guide or any other um, containerized products through uh, Docker. So think of Portainer as like a GUI interface to Docker because without Portainer, you're going to have to manually type everything. So like in this instance right here on this virtual machine that I have, if I want to check on things, you know, it's not hard, but I can be like, hey, Docker, you know, PS, and it gives me, hey, this is what's up and this is what's going. Here's the name and all that other stuff. But that's just only to just check on the status. That's not even about replicating, um, you know, checking through all the ports. I mean, they're advertised here, but it, it can get a little get bit complicated if you try to manage everything, right? So when you install Plex Guide, by default, Portainer's already, <clears throat> Portainer's already gonna install. So you don't have to worry about anything. That It just makes the whole process easy for you, right? Um, so in order to access Portainer, it's gonna be either through port 9000, or it's gonna be through port, uh, or it's gonna be through subdomain portainer.domain.com. So one of the first things you need to do is secure Portainer if you definitely have it on a dedicated machine. Why? Because when you first set it up, it's gonna be like, hey, I don't know anything, right? So for sanity check purposes here, let me uninstall it. Let's see, we've got PG Box, removal. We're gonna move Portainer. Now, if I start up the program again, it's just gonna reinstall itself, which is a good thing, right? So uh, Portainer is also an anchor. So when you launch PG Shield and a few other configurations, it checks to see if Portainer is up because that's how we know that your subdomain is fully working. So if I exit, Type Plex Guide. Yeah, I need to update this version. It's <laughs> still on a, a beta that's giving me errors. Um, it should already be installing. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up and refresh the page. Yep, did exactly what I thought it would do. And then you're always gonna pick local. Unless you know what you're doing here, always pick local. It, it, it seems kind of counterintuitive because you're like, oh, I want to install a remote version. This is if you manage it remotely. And if you know how to set it all up to do it, good for you. And the reason it's local, even if it's on a distant machine, is because when you're accessing it through your port or your domain, it's like actually being locally on the box. If you mess this up, just take um, PG box and then select the uninstaller and uninstall portainer. Because what it'll do is it'll delete all the data. Okay, go ahead and hit connect. And if you've used Portain over time, you notice that their interface has changed quite a bit uh, for the better. So by entering a key. So you can add additional users if you need to. You usually don't see that being the case, but you can. Um, there was a section before where you could actually, yeah, so this would have to be turned on. And if you turn on the templates, it will actually install various templates that are here. But anyways, we're not here for that. Just that's just some oversight information. So it shows you what, how many cores and how many processes you have running, and you can also see the effects that Portainer, a uh, certain container, has on your uh, virtual machine. Something I didn't pay attention to. So you can see here, this is what we have up right now: OAuth authentication, Portainer, traffic, and Watchtower. Right. If you pay attention to the right, here's the published ports. These are the ports that are actually being used. So a lot of people that have, for example, traffic problems, right? They're like, hey man, my traffic's not working, right? Well, it, it needs port 443 and 80, like actually hardcore, you know, the actual port port. And the thing is they'll have like caddy or something running in the background or some web server taking up port 80, uh, failing to disclose that and come to realize is that the reason their containers won't work is because that's the case. So if you're having conflicting ports with any program, pay attention to the published ports because that's what it's taking up. Here's the image name, in case you're curious. So this is how, this is the image that's being pulled. If you want to check on the status of something, right here. So here's Portainer, and you can see the devastating impact that Portainer is having on the system. And looks like not that much. It's taking a second to load. So right there, that's how much uh, RAM is being taken up. There's the impact to the CPU, insanely low, and it looks like it goes for 35 seconds. So you can change the refresh rate if you need to. So let's go to one. I'm on like really slow internet right now. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Portainer just spiking through the roof. 
almost wants to take up a whole percentage point. <laughs> so something that's pretty cool that uh, so you you could see if, like for example if you have like eight gigs of RAM, you can use net data or you can use this to see how much RAM a particular portainer, uh, uh, not portainer, um, how much a particular container is using. And the reason that's important is because sometimes containers can go rogue and, and, and it may not be used. You may just have to simply reboot the machine and go back here again. So something that's interesting that you can use is there's a command prompt line right here. So you can actually enter the actual um, command line of certain things and, and see how everything's being viewed. Now, this won't work for everything. So for example, I think Portainer doesn't work. I know like views radar or sonar or anything like that, it will. Um, you see this user right here? If you're gonna enter, it's best to log in as user 1000, 1000. Why? It's because those are the permissions that all your containers are running. So if you run it as root and you're trying to troubleshoot, you, it'll work, but it may give you misleading information. So for example, if you can't access a certain folder, you will see be able to see that with 1000, 1000 better. I don't think this will work. Not for this, not for this one now. Okay. I don't have that. I don't really have anything else up. So actually let's bring up Let's go ahead and install something just to show you how to troubleshoot with Portainer. Uh, let's install some core. Now understand the reason you're seeing a double colon is because it's doing a translation. So one is internal and one is external. So uh, for example, like uh, Jellyfin used the same port that MB needs. So in that case, you'll see 8096, I believe, and then 9096. So to access Jellyfin, it'll be 9096. Um, Docker is doing all the translation behind the scenes, which is actually pretty cool. So when you launch something, you got to make sure to refresh the page if for some reason you're just on it. And you notice there comes up uh, radar. See? So here is the command line prompt. And remember I was talking about thousand, thousand? Make sure you do that. Because that's how, it, again, you, that's how you want to see things if you're troubleshooting. So I'm going to hit connect. And you could see that we're now in the command line interface, right? So type ls tac la and you could see that you could see everything at the root of the container, right? So if I go to cd mount type ls tac la, you'll notice here that you can see everything that's in mount. Now this doesn't this doesn't exactly exist in this container. It's part of that translation piece. So one, if you can't see this that's not a good sign it means that it cannot access your real machine so in the volumes we can see that so if i go to cdnzb and then type lsla you see how well right now i don't have it deployed right um but let's say i wanted to do a test if i type touch corn txt that's a good sign that um radar has the ability to talk to that folder so that's how sometimes you can test if things are working. So if you're getting that, hey, I can't read this permission, I can't, I can't do X, Y, and Z, that's the reason why. So that, that's what I would do. Uh, LSLA. Okay. So let's get out of here. Just exit. So basically this command line interface is actually pretty good to use. So this is something that I would uh, use to test things. So disconnect. And that's pretty much it for um, Portainer. So sometimes I'll intermix it with going saying Portainer, container. You'll, you'll, over time, you'll get confused over time because you'll say um, things so much. But again, this is a very useful program. This is, um, and if you also need to check the logs, this is one that way you could check the logs right here. So if things aren't loading up, you can see why. And this is actually very useful. There are many times where I have troubleshot something, tried to troubleshoot, and I forget to look at the logs. And it'll say something like port taken, um, database, cannot access mounts, whatever. So pay attention to that. And then what else? If you click this right here, it basically gives you all your variable information. That's pretty much it. And your runtime. Other than that, you have an outstanding day. Please rate the uh, videos, thumbs up, subscribe, join the forum, donate. Uh, thanks for being part of the community. I hope that this information helps you out.